Hey, what's up, podcast? This week I talked to Paula Telfair. She's the CEO of Easter Seals Alberta. They're a nonprofit that support individuals with disabilities and medical conditions. On the podcast, we talk about leadership during COVID, when the time's right to switch up your career, nonprofit challenges, and much, much more. Remember to rate and subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. You get awesome local leaders and entrepreneur stories each week, jam packed with their unique insights. Leave me feedback at joe at codessa.io on some of the stories or questions you want to hear. I read them all now to the podcast. Hope you guys enjoy. Welcome to the podcast, Paula. Happy to have you on. Thanks for having me, Joe. I appreciate it. Awesome. So let's, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, tell us more about uh, who Paula is and kind of your origin story for our listeners. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm a Calgary girl born and raised, which is a pretty rare thing, I think, these days. And <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I've been here my, my entire life. Um, I raised six beautiful children, so that was uh, that was earlier on in my life, obviously. And um, so my focus and commitment was really to, to raising them, and I had a bit of a business on the side throughout all of those years. But when my kids started to get older, I realized that, um, that obviously they were going to grow up and, and do their own thing like kids are meant to do, and that I wanted to make sure that I wasn't left um, – with, with a life and a lifestyle that was leaving me unfulfilled. So that's when I went back to school as probably what you would call a mature student these days and, uh, and pursued um, a, a totally different kind of career. And I was looking at clinical counseling initially. And that just kind of morphed into different opportunities that presented to me once I got back out into the workforce. And, and I've had just an incredible career um, working with some of the best organizations in this city and with some of the most amazing people. So yeah, it's been absolutely incredible. And now I've kind of landed here in this position with Easter Seals, Alberta, and I've been with them uh, for a year now and I'm in the uh, CEO position and, and that's where I am today. Maybe give a little bit of context as to what Easter Seal does and uh, all the great work you guys do. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Easter Seals Alberta is a provincial organization, and we serve adults and children with disabilities. And we provide a number of different programs from a residential home that we have up in Edmonton called McQueen Home. That's a home for nine uh, adults with disabilities. And we have um, a program here in Calgary called our Accessible Support Program. And we help uh, people with disabilities access uh, equipment that they need, be it hospital beds or wheelchairs or, or whatever they need. And then, of course, we've got our beautiful Camp Horizon located out in Kananaskis country, where we serve well over a thousand um, people with disabilities every year with, um, with recreational activities and, uh, and camping experiences out there. Did you always envision having a uh, career in the nonprofit industry? No, I don't think I did. <laughs> I'm not sure I knew what I was going to do. Uh, I know, you know, as a kid, I really um, wanted to be a lawyer. And, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, always my vision there was kind of, you know, being able to uh, fight and support um, people in unfortunate positions. So I suppose since I didn't pursue law, this wasn't too much of a stretch. Um, I think I've just always had a bit of a passion for, for people in, in vulnerable positions. What's one thing you wish you would have known when you first began your career? Um, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with and, and observe some really great leaders throughout um, the course of my career. And I think what I, what I wish I would have known then is that leaders are human. Um, leaders, leaders fail before they become leaders. They fail when they are leaders. Um, they're, they're human. They, they, they have fears. Uh, and, and I think if I would have clued into that a little sooner, that they weren't um, different than you or I, that I would have been a little kinder to myself uh, along my career path. And I would have realized that, you know, I, I do have something to bring to these positions. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I kind of think I, I wish I would have known that leaders were just human. Yeah, we're, we're all human. Sometimes we forget about that. We're all human. 
<laughs> it's actually more than okay to be human. That's what we're still supposed to be. Absolutely. And speaking about being a human, obviously humans make mistakes. But for you personally, has there been a, a big challenge or even maybe a failure that uh, you learned from uh, during the course of your career? Oh, I don't think we have enough time to talk about all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, I think, you know, the it's, it's just human to have had lots of challenges and lots of failures. Um, I, I think one of the, um, I mean, it's difficult right now to think about a bigger challenge than the one we're facing right now in society with, um, with COVID-19 and its impact. Um, I mean, it's impacted the entire world, obviously, and everybody in the world doesn't matter if you're corporate or not for profit or you know just as an individual so I think you know honestly this is probably one of the greatest challenges that I have faced because it kind of defies everything that we're ever taught about leadership um, you know when you're when you're taking leadership courses it's always about you know strategy and and being visionary and um, and and this challenge of COVID-19 and how it's impacted you know I can speak certainly to how it's impacted Easter Seals Alberta um, has required that we kind of throw all that right out the window and that we be very responsive and that we're ready to, you know, all the key words right now are that we're ready to pivot and uh, be creative and just try something. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. We'll just try something else. Um, so it's been a real challenge because it's, it's, it's challenged me to kind of change the way I think about a lot of things as well. I read recently that about three quarters of charities uh, reported a decrease in fundraising because of the whole, obviously, social distancing and COVID. But for you personally, I guess, if whatever you can share, how have you guys been able to weather the storm and prepare for the quote-unquote new normal? Yeah, well, we're, we're, we continue just to try day by day. Um, we, we, were, we were hit really, really hard um, because we had a number of events planned for the spring uh, and the summer and the fall, obviously. But yeah, right, right when COVID-19, we were kind of encouraged to go into lockdown. Um, we had had a number of events planned for right around that time, so we lost all that revenue. And uh, and Camp Horizon obviously is one of our greatest uh, sources of revenue, and we're not able to provide any um, camps um, at all this spring and summer. We are a year-round camp, so we are hoping that there will be a glimmer of hope maybe for fall or winter. But um, but thus far, we just continue to seek some government support. We, um, yeah, we're just kind of day by day doing the best that we can to, to sustain the storm. Absolutely. Not sustain the storm, to sustain us through this storm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what advice would you give somebody wanting to pursue a career similar to yours? <laughs> oh, be brave. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the best piece of advice I could give anyone pursuing any kind of a career is um, to be prepared that things may not go the way you think they're going to go. It may not go in the direction that you think it's going to go. And to be open to that, to be okay with that. Um, because when I think back, you know, to kind of what my, my plans were, I, I don't think I've kind of gone in the direction of any of them opportunities present and you kind of weigh them at that time and and yeah you just go in a different direction and not to be afraid of that it's it's okay to make changes and it's okay to try something and say yeah that's not so much for me um i'm gonna i'm gonna be brave and, and make another change besides from being brave what's a unique skill that you think that's helped you become uh, successful today um i i think some of the 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 key things about making sure that you, you do something successfully in life, doesn't matter what it is, is, is to be open, to be open to learning, to be open to learning from others, to be open to learning from um, books and from uh, different educational opportunities and, and to be curious. Um, sometimes my kids will tell me that I ask too many questions of people, but I'm really curious about, about what makes people tick and, and why people think what they do. And, and I think those are, those are things that have um, have worked well for me. Speaking of some of the resources that's helped you along the way, what have been the best ones for you? Well, you know, I've done a lot of um, a lot of training and uh, different educational opportunities from the Banff Leadership Center in the last number of years, uh, and I can't say enough about that uh, that place and the course that they offer. 
Um, so last year I completed my certification in strategic leadership and they're just, they're, they just offer tremendous learnings and, uh, and do so in, in an amazing atmosphere. And of course it doesn't hurt to be in the mountains while you're learning. Um, so I've, I've, I've really appreciated what, uh, what opportunities I've had from the leadership center. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of Brene Brown. Um, I think she continues to kind of speak what a lot of us think. Um, and she's definitely one of those authors that, you know, I have, uh, I have all of her books on my coffee table at all times, and you can pick those books up at different points in your life. Uh, and, and I just learn something different every time. Is there a key takeaway from one of those books that you, that's really resonated with you? Oh, there's so many. I, I think, oh gosh, I think one of, you know, one of her, her quotes that, um, that I think about often, um, is she says uh, what we know matters but who we are matters more Mm. and I think that kind of um, just kind of guides me every day Um, obviously we all you know go out into the world and and we have to you know bring our educational experiences and our learnings along with us and and demonstrate certain skills Um, but I do think that you know at the end of the day it really is it is about who we are and, and how we how we treat people and how we make people feel that will probably matter even more. Uh, you mentioned about some of your key attributes to you, to yourself is being curious. For my curiosity and maybe the listeners as well, what are you curious about right now? I think I'm really really curious in in this moment in time about what um, what the future is going to look like. I I don't know that I've really ever stopped and thought about that a lot before in my life. But I, I feel like so many things have changed in the last couple of months. Um, I feel that, you know, the impact of this pandemic on society and on relationships is is literally life altering. Um, so I'm curious, you know, what we're going to see come out of this. Um, you know, I'm curious from an economic standpoint what the impact of this is going to be. I'm curious how, um, you know, having been raised in a, in a generation where everybody went to work, um, and now I'm seeing how incredibly effective we've been working remotely and, and how we've been utilizing technology to support that. So I'm curious, like, is that going to be the new way we all go forward? Um, I'm curious about, you know, the impact of, of this pandemic on relationships. Is it, I mean, I'm guessing it's going to change, you know, how we greet each other. And I'm already reading all this, you know, stuff about, you know, are we going to shake hands? Are we like, what is the new professional courtesy going to be? So I just think for the first time in my lifetime, anyways, Joe, we're, we're definitely looking at, um, at a future that is vastly different, I think, than the way it was last year. That's some great insight there, Paula. It's like everybody else just looking to see what uh, the future has in store for uh, your industry or even your profession. Um, what's a common myth? that uh, you wish would be debunked? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think for me, um, so my husband works in the, you know, so-called corporate world, um, whereas, yeah, I'm in this not, non, non-profit world. And I, I think one of the things that, um, that I see sometimes as a, bit of a, as a bit of a myth about the not-for-profit, the not-for-profit world is that somehow not-for-profit organizations aren't viewed as as competent or as reputable as for-profit businesses, and mm-hmm. and and of course we know that that's just not the the truth at all. Um, and I think we're kind of seen sometimes as you know we're the do-gooders, and um, but that's kind of what drives us. And I, and I think sometimes people don't realize the amount of of skill. Um, and, and special characteristics that are required to work in the not-for-profit world. Is there any crossover uh, that's, uh, from, from your perspective, that's pretty apparent from the corporate to non-profit world? Well, I'm, I'm sure, you know, if you've talked to other, you know, non-profit um, uh, leaders, Joe, I mean, you know, the, the common thing that seems to come out all the time is the disparity in wages. Um, you know the the not for profit world just doesn't um, just doesn't generate the same kind of salaries that you do in a, in the corporate world, 
And I think, you know, sometimes it's viewed too that, um, well, I know I've been asked on more than one occasion, um, oh, is that a paid position? Uh, <laughs> I think sometimes people think if you work in the nonprofit world that we're all just here as vol- volunteers. Um, and, and of course, that's not the case. There's people, lots of people just like me, and we've dedicated our whole lives, our whole careers to uh, to working um, and being committed to the not-for-profit uh, world. So, yeah, I think sometimes the not-for-profit world just isn't understood all that well either. From your perspective, how has Calgary changed from when you first started uh, to where you are today? Well, if I told you the way it used to be way back in the day, then, then you know, I'd make myself seem really, really old. <laughs> <laughs> but having lived in Calgary all my life, having been born here, um, oh gosh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen so much change. Um, but, you know, the one thing that I, I do think is unique about this city um, is that, you know, I've, I've been very fortunate to have done some traveling and to have been overseas and, and, you know, I experienced different cities and different cultures. And, and what I always, always say, no matter where you go in this world, is that the people in Calgary are the most amazing people. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just polite and friendly. And, um, yeah, it's just different. I, I, was, I won't say where I was uh, in February, but, you know, I was in another city here in Canada. And I turned to my husband when I was there and I, was, I said, you know, like, this isn't even all that far from home. And yet the people aren't quite the same as they are in Calgary. So that's one thing that hasn't changed in Calgary um, amidst all the growth that we've seen. And, um, and this, you know, again, this city, I think, you know, we've, or our province, we've just been hit really hard the last number of years. And, um, and yet somehow the spirit of Calgarians has remained. I think we'll be able to move past this pandemic and be more stronger on the other end. Mm, I will. agree with you. What's one question that you never get asked that you wish you would be asked? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. You know, I had this conversation with a friend the other day, so maybe it would be related to this. We were talking about when you're when you're dealing with you know staff and you're dealing with your team. Um, in, in my opinion, you, you really need to find out what motivates them. Um, and if you find out what motivates them, then you, I think it gives us a, a better idea of how to effectively work with them. So I, I guess I would have to say, yeah, something that probably I don't get asked very often, you know, is kind of what motivates me? What, what inspires me? Um, what makes me get up every day and keep doing what I'm doing? Yeah, mm. I don't think I've, I don't know if I've ever been asked that, but I, I I do ask that of others quite frequently, what motivates them. Well, that segues perfectly into my next question. What uh, motivates you, Paula? (laughs) And this might sound a little corny, but it is my truth. I mean, what motivates me is uh, making a difference in this world. Um, Mm. I, I, I want the world to be different because I was here. I want to, you know, it doesn't have to be on a massive scale. Uh, I just want to be able to contribute. I want to be able to help. Yeah, I just want to make a difference. From what you can share, is there anything that you're proud of at your work at uh, Easter Seals? Yeah, oh, there's so much. Um, not just my work, it's it's the work of my team. Um, I we, we help so many vulnerable Albertans um, and the impact that we have uh, when we can offer them opportunities, you know, out, let's say out, out of Camp Horizon that they would never get anywhere else. You know, when when we have campers come out to Camp Horizon, Joe, they can they can experience um, high ropes, they can experience whitewater rafting, um, and and these are these are people that might be in wheelchairs, and and yet we'll make that happen for them. So you know, giving seeing the the impact on on people that get to experience that. Um, you honestly can take your breath away sometimes. It's just, it's just so wonderful to see. So, I'm so proud of, of that work that we do that that gives um, gives our clients those opportunities. I'm also so proud right now of this organization and how we are weathering this storm. We we um, we're working so hard. Um, we are. My team is so committed um, to making sure that that we do weather this storm. 
we're not in a in a great position. You know, we're not sitting on on um, tons of reserves or anything like that. We rely heavily on our donors to to support us, and and right now we're also very cognizant of the fact that that everybody's been impacted. So uh, people can't always help the way they used to help us either. Um, so, but you know, anyways, we we just continue to get up every day, and we get on our Zoom calls, and we encourage each other, and we commiserate with each other when we have not good days. Uh, but I'm proud of how we are just hanging in there with with our last breath. We are going to um, do all that we can to make sure that this organization is alive and well when when this pandemic is behind us. I think you guys are doing great work, and I really want our listeners to help any way they can what would be the best way or is there any upcoming events or initiatives yeah. that you could do? No, not really at this time. I mean, we're still trying to figure out, you know, we do host um, two golf tournaments every year, one in Edmonton, one in Calgary. Um, we actually have a call regarding that on Thursday to kind of see where the golf courses are at and if this is something that we're going to be able to do. I, I honestly kind of doubt that that's going to happen um so i don't you know i don't know at this point joe i mean obviously we we you know appreciate every bit of financial help that people give us um because we we are definitely in need of, of financial supports um but yeah i just you know i would encourage everybody just to keep following us on our on our website on our social media platforms where we provide updates as to what we're able to offer and when we'll be able to offer it and um and just not to forget about us during these hard times i appreciate you being on the podcast to share your story and all the great things your organization and team are doing at easter seals I'd usually like to end the podcast with the guest either posing a question to the audience or a quote or a story to leave them with the interview well, I already touched on it earlier because I, I, uh, I, I did want to say at the end of all of this, really, um, you know, it's that quote from Brene Brown that I love so much. It's uh, what we know matters, but who we are matters more. So, yeah, I guess I'd like to leave the audience with that just to, you know, every day I think all of us are seeing we, we don't really know how to navigate these days perfectly right now. Um, and that's okay because it's about who we are that matters. Oh.